Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, the state legislature is considering a couple of election bills that critics say will lead to voter suppression. We'll hear both sides of the issue. And a solar panel assembly plant in Goodyear is shutting down. We'll find out why and get more on the state of the solar industry in Arizona. Those stories next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. The United States Supreme Court today heard oral arguments on a same-sex marriage case out of California. A 90-minute debate was described by some court watchers as riveting, with some of the justices indicating that the issue of same-sex marriage might not be ready for the high court to hear. Four members of the court indicated that they may vote to dismiss the case, saying supporters of California's Proposition 8 may not have had standing to appeal a lower court decision. Justice Anthony Kennedy, who holds the key vote in many close decisions, said, quote, I just wonder if this case was properly granted. Three bills, two bills, excuse me, two bills, potentially changing election laws in Arizona are getting a lot of attention. One bill would permit county recorders to notify those on the permanent early voting list that they will be dropped from the list if they fail to vote in the past two federal elections. Another bill would prohibit a worker or volunteer for a political group to return another person's ballot to a polling place. Here now to talk about the measures are Pima County Recorder F.N. Rodriguez and State Senator Steve Gallardo, who opposes the two bills. Good to have you both here. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Let's talk about uh, the voter registration designate. O only a, a voter designate can turn in another person's ballot. Uh, why would that be necessary? Well, first of all, um, thank you for inviting me down here. I'm, I'm the Pima County Recorder from Pima County. Um, but there are two different bills. Uh, the bill that about somebody picking up a ballot is Secretary of State Ken Bennett's bill. Okay, so he's the author and he got a representative to um, sponsor the bill. The recorders happen to support it. What we believe is that um, no one, and it's always been my policy, no one should be ever giving their ballot to a stranger no matter what, I, before even this bill was implemented. I, and I still feel very strongly that way. That um, I always ask the question in reverse. Would you, if somebody came to your front door and it was a total stranger, would you give them their voted ballot? And I would not do that, and most people would not do that one. We just don't think it's a good public policy for people to going out there, no matter which political party they belong to, which special interest groups they are, or um, anybody else should be going out there and potentially not turning in a, a voter's ballot. And our job as the recorders of the, sacred, uh, the state of Arizona is to preserve the integrity of the voting process. Why not limit who can turn in another person's ballot? Who are we to tell a voter what they can do with their ballot? When, 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 when I receive my ballot, I'm able to vote whoever I want to vote for. And at the end of the day, I should have the right to give my ballot to whoever I want to. If I want to give my ballot to an organization, if I want to give it to a family member, someone from my church, that's fine. It is my ballot. I should have the right to do whatever I want uh, with our ballot. How, why should politicians tell a voter what they can do with their ballot. It's their ballot. They should be able to do what they want with their ballot. I think that is uh, uh, probably the most fundamental right we have as voters is to be able to vote and to be able to vote for who we want and should be able to give our ballot to whoever we want. If we trust a friend, if we trust an organization, we should have that right. What, what, how do you respond to that in the sense that it, it may not be the wisest thing to do, for, it may not be the wisest thing for you to do, but to take away that particular right would be wrong? What were what were the recorders of the state of Arizona? And remember, the the recorders of the state of Arizona are, are collectively um, um, nonpartisan. As far as we represent a diverse group, there are eight of us that are Democrat, seven of us are Republican. So we came together a, and decided on some key legislation. Again, this is Secretary of State Ken Bennett, and he is going to be providing some modifications to the bill. As to far as um, if you happen to know the person, then you can go ahead and, and give your ballot to that one. Like let's say somebody from your bingo group or your church group, and that's going to be a proposal at end. What we're talking about is to somebody that is a total stranger that are paid political people. These are paid political people. And that's not that true. That's not out. true. Not all of them are paid. A lot of these folks are volunteers that volunteer for many different organizations, League of Women Voters, uh, 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 Unite Here. There's so many different organizations with one purpose. How do we get folks involved in our election? Uh, many of them are volunteers. They're not paid. Granted, 
Perhaps some are paid, but the vast majority are not paid. They are volunteers, and they're going out in our community. They're knocking on doors. They're encouraging people, don't forget to vote, reminding them it's election time, and, and asking them, would you like us to help you deliver their ballots? Many of them don't trust the post office. Many of them uh, perhaps uh, just feel comfortable with giving their ballot, and they should have that right, and I think that's an important right. Paid or otherwise, there are some who say that this move, this one particular move, would help end voter fraud. How do you respond and to that? Voter fraud has nothing to do with this. It has nothing to do with voter fraud. The, the fact is, is the question we should be asking ourselves is what are we doing to educate voters? What are we doing to make sure that the voters understand that perhaps giving it to someone else is not the wisest thing? But at the end of the day, this is, this is someone's right. They can do whatever they want with the ballot. They can vote however they want. Uh, that is the voter's right, and I think we should respect the voters. Are you concerned about voter fraud with this? Yes, I am, because, you know, there's the, the potential of this one. And like I said, I have always been an advocate, and before even this bill was proposed, that nobody should be giving their ballot to a total stranger. You know, we are hearing from our constituents, the recorders, and what we have heard is that they're actually calling and saying they represent the recorder's office or they're representing somebody which in fact is not true and it's not all of them but all you have the potential of the voter fraud out there and that's what we're out here to preserve that there's no um, illegalities going on and, and things of that nature mm -hmm. and again as long as you know that person we are comfortable with it like I said if you have somebody that's a part of your bridge group or your neighbor next door or a, rel a relative, that's perfectly okay because you know that person because you entrust them. We're talking about strangers coming to people's door and asking them for their ballot. That's what we're talking about. Voter fraud, it, again, it's a red herring where we're trying to offer an actual distraction to, to, to what is at, at stake here. The fact is we have organizations, we have volunteers people who are volunteering their time in 100 degrees weather just to make sure that people have the right to vote. Only in Arizona would we make it a felony for someone to help another person to vote. It's unfortunate that this type of bill has moved forward. Now, I do commend Secretary of State Bennett for coming and trying to negotiate and, and working on, on some consensus. We are working with him. However, the current bill, the way it stands, it's unacceptable. We should let the voters have the right to do whatever they want with their ballot. Let's get to the second bill now, the idea of being off a permanent early voting list if you haven't voted in a federal election for two, uh, two straight election cycles. Why is that necessary? Well, you know, after the, the 2012 election, you know, the state of Arizona was taking a very long time to finish the election process. I mean, we were on radio stations, on TV station, and, and the recorders got convened in December. And we said, this is not acceptable. What are the things that we need to do to um, preserve the, the voting process, to make sure that they run smoother, and what are the problems? So we collectively, remember, this is 15 um, county recorders who collectively have received 1.5 million um, votes ourselves. So the voters of the state of Arizona entrust us to make these decisions. We are the experts. And that's what um, Senate Bill 1261 does. And it's just not, when we say two federal election cycles, that's really, these voters would miss four elections because you have to include the primary elections. These people are not voting um, through the they don't vote that method. And that's what we are asking the state legislature to give us permission to send these voters a notification. We're not, our, we're just not removing them, but send them a notification so that they have to reconfirm that they actually want to be on it. It doesn't change their voting status. They're still a registered voter in the state of Arizona. It's just getting them off the list because they actually don't want to be on the list. Well, why not drop someone or at least notify that you're going to drop someone from a permanent early voting list if they're not a permanent early voter? This, this is the one bill that really just gets to me because here, here's, here's a bill that we definitely have some issues with. And I understand the, the, the concerns that the county recorders have. We have an opportunity to, to, to come to consensus on this particular bill, as we do with any other bill. We get the stakeholders together, we start talking about it, and come up to, with some type of consensus. We have offered that with the county recorders, all 15. Let's come down, let's bring the constituency groups together, let's bring the people with disabilities, let's bring uh, the Native American, African American, Hispanic groups, let's bring in all the advocacy groups. Let's have a stakeholders meeting to have uh, 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 some type of a compromise. They rejected that idea. They say they're not interested in compromising, they're pushing this bill forward. However, I do think this is a good bill that can be fixed. Uh, it's only if the county recorders and the association of counties decide to come to the table and negotiate. Well, biggest what, biggest fr frustration on that bill is they're not wanting to come to some type of compromise. What would they negotiate? What's your compromise? Well, 
perfect, perfectly is the, is the postcard. Right now, under this particular bill, uh, anyone who doesn't vote will receive a postcard, and if you don't sign it, date it, and return it back, uh, you'll be removed from the permanent early ballot list. What we're saying is let's have an opt-out. Our current system right now as a, as a voter, you have to sign a form to get on. And in order to get off, you have to sign a form to get off. That, that actual process is working. I don't know about Pima County, Maricopa County, 3,000 people decided to opt out. Let's continue that opt out system. Let's send them a postcard and say, hey, you're not voting early. So why not opt out and give them an opportunity to sign and get off? Opt out system makes sense to you? Well, right now, um, we don't think, the recorders don't think that um, uh, that system would work. Because these voters, we have sent them a ballot. They have not voted these four ballots for these elections, so we don't think they're going to have a response if they, we send them some notice about opting out. Some point in here becomes voter responsibility in, in, the, in this process. And Steve is, I, I can't speak um, for Maricopa County, I can speak for what we happen in, in Pima County, but we again have said this is the best method that, that will work for getting these people off the list. It was also was the recorders that came up with the idea of the permanent early voting list and we came to the legislature to ask permission. We said the constituents of the state of Arizona are calling the recorders and they want to be on the permanent early voting list. So we created this law. We've been through two federal, um, excuse me, two presidential elections and now we're coming back saying we need some fine tuning in, the, in this process and this is the best bill that we can come forward to keep the integrity of the, of the election process going for the, for the state of Arizona. Critics will say that these, these, these bills in the second, put them both together here, that this, this equates to, these bills equate to voter suppression at, at worst um, and, and streamlining at the expense of the ability to vote at best. How do you respond to that? Well, we don't feel like that it suppresses anything. We were kind of like taken back when, we, when the accusation with to the recorders of, was that we were trying to suppress us. The job of the recorders of the state of Arizona is to encourage voter participation. And like I just said, we were the ones that decided to create the permanent early voting list. And it's a good mechanism. And we want to preserve those voters that are on the list that are using, using this method. And that's what we, we want to protect, too. Do you really see this as voter suppression? Oh, definitely. I mean, the, the, the fact is, even in our, our Senate hearing, uh, we had over 100 people weigh in in opposition. These are taxpayers. These are, are, are people within throughout the entire state of Arizona that came out in opposition to this particular bill. Uh, however, I do believe that the county recorders do need a mechanism. I don't believe this is, this is truly the mechanism that they need in order to remove names. I do believe it does have the unintended consequences of suppressing uh, uh, the, the actual vote on Election Day. I understand their, their, their concerns. I'm with them. What I'm asking them, come to the table and negotiate a compromise. Let's bring all the groups together. Let's have a stakeholders meeting. Unfortunately, the county recorders failed and want to come to the table to negotiate. Uh, that's, that's the sad part. Is, well, please. I also have to say that we, during the Senate hearings, we did do a compromise and we did an amendment, Steve, because we agreed we were originally going to go after just the voters that were on the 2012 elections. And what came out of the hearings is that in the public, and we heard them, they wanted us to do two federal elections. So the recorders agreed. We did an amendment and we went back and said, we will create the, the, the list of data that, that will be receiving this notice for two federal elections. So we went back to the 2010 and the 2012 election. And, 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 and there, there was a lot, of, a lot of different ideas that were thrown out on, on actually out there in, uh, in, in the Senate committee. Unfortunately, uh, many of those ideas were dismissed before even uh, given an opportunity to have a full discussion. I even offered amendments uh, in the Senate uh, Elections Committee. Uh, they failed to get a hearing. The, the chair did not want to even, even discuss them. Uh, some of the ideas were adopted, and that's fine. I, I commend them for that. However, there's some other issues that need to be addressed. Come to the table. Let's negotiate. Let's come up with a compromise. And I think the recorders of the state of Arizona are, are willing to continue this process. We're, we're really willing to listen to future amendments. But right now, we feel that this is the best method so we can straighten out the problems that occurred would, in the would, 2012 would, would, election. Would, would, would you support uh, uh, the idea of coming to the table and negotiating with the advocacy groups and elected officials, the if senators? Because we, uh, be we offered that invitation and they told us no. They told us no. They said we, were, we will not negotiate. I'm not sure who they is. The Association of Counties. Okay. 
Well, I can speak for, for myself, you know, and, and Steve, you know, you deal with a lot of different lobbyists, but I know the recorders will be listening to, and we can go through another a legislative session. But what I want to get back to is that we feel that we need to straighten out these things right now for the 2014 election, and that's why we proposed um, Senate Bill. Um, and we, we have a whole other session to deal with it come 2014. Well, let's work on an, uh, an amendment in the interim. And let's come back with another bill in 2014. All right, and we'll stop it right there. Good to have you both here. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Expand your horizon with the Arizona Horizon website. To get there, go to azpbs.org. Click on the Arizona Horizon tab at the top of the screen. Once there, you can access many features. Watch interviews by clicking on the video button. You can also find out what's on Arizona Horizon for the coming week. If you would like an RSS feed, a podcast, or want to buy a video, that's all on the website too. Want to learn about specific topics like immigration or the legislature? You can visit our special web sections. Show your support for Arizona Horizon at azpbs.org slash Arizona Horizon. SunTech Power Holding Company is closing its solar panel assembly. Bankruptcy. Here now to talk about the plant's closure and what it all means to the solar industry in Arizona is Mike Sunnix, who's been covering the story for the Phoenix Business Journal. Good to see you again. Thanks, Thanks for joining us Thanks here. For uh, SunTech Power Holdings. Who are we talking about They're here? They're a Chinese company, huge Chinese company, one of the biggest solar panel manufacturers in the world. Uh, there was big fanfare back in 2010 when they opened the Goodyear plant that, that you referenced. They were going to hire 150, 300 people to, to assemble solar panels shipped in from China. Um, it was kind of a big linchpin of our solar economic development efforts. Jam Brewer was there. All the big economic developers were there. It was a big win for the West Valley, which is, you know, tried to get more high-wage jobs. This was, these were manufacturing production type jobs. All that's gone. How many jobs would be lost here? They only at the end they had 43 people there. They had, they had ramped up a little bit, uh, but had had cut back. But when they when they announced the layoffs and obviously the bankruptcy that's happened, um, they, they're shuttering the plant, and 43 folks are uh, are out of work. So, but it's it's a big disappointment both for the solar industry and for the region. And did the plant closes what in a couple of weeks here? Or yeah, yeah, they're pretty much. Uh, uh, shutting it down. It, they, they, they made the, the panels in China, they shipped them here, and they were assembled here. It was kind of to get, get around the Buy American type uh, contracts so they could sell to some, some uh, public utilities, public entities, allow them to sell to school systems. So a lot of government agencies, states, uh, localities have, have a Buy American uh, rule. So if, if they do some of the work here, yes. uh, car, car companies do the same thing. Do some of the work here, uh, they're able to, to get around that. Get some U.S. fingerprints on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. So why is this plant closing? There's a couple of things. Uh, some of it's uh, systematic problems with the solar industry. There's too many producers chasing too few consumers. Uh, I think there was a report there's 80 some major uh, solar producers in the world. Uh, they're very reliant on subsidies, uh, tax breaks, incentives. You get a tax break or, or some kind of incentive from utility for, for getting a solar water heater. It works like that. It, it, they've done this a lot in Europe. Uh, Germany and Spain have done a lot of subsidies. It's a very popular uh, industry, both uh, politically uh, and, and with the media. And so you see these programs uh, that, that encourage businesses and consumers to, to, to go solar and do, and do these things. As 
soon as it as soon as these things end, it seems like the uh, the, the companies falter. Uh, secondly, SunTech itself has a lot of problems. A ton of debt, a billion dollars in debt. There's questions of how they were managed. They're 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 limiting the uh, the CEO back in China from being able to leave the country. Um, there's a lot of questions about SunTech itself. So it's not that's not just a solar industry thing. This company had a lot of problems. Was uh, got caught up in a lot of debt. I was going to say. I mean, subsidies are one thing, and SunTech having you know bankruptcy problems and all sorts of weirdness going on there in China is another. There's also the idea that uh, this we we got. Tariffs on these Chinese these uh, imports, don't we? Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, at the end of the last year, the Obama administration uh, imposed, I think, 27 percent uh, tariffs on on uh, solar panels coming in from China, arguing that that they were not uh, competing fairly, uh, that they were subsidizing their own companies over there and then dumping cheap product over here in the U.S. to the detriment of people like First Solar, who's based in Tempe. So, so those went into effect, and, and that was also part of the SunTech's demise. Was was this? Um, and, and, and obviously, that's been a trade problem with China. On other other areas too, but it's especially in solar. And solar is so competitive, and the prices are so low at times when the subsidies aren't there that 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 this dumping makes it even worse. So so SunTech really got caught in kind of a, a bad situation. And it sounds like in China, so much is subsidized over there that there are these little companies propping up all over the place. And as you mentioned, there are far more panels than the need be than the demand calls for. Yeah, I mean China subsidizes a lot of its a lot of its industries, including solar. Uh, there's currency issues, uh, the way they the way they treat raw materials like aluminum um, and, and solar panels themselves. And so, yeah, you've seen these, these, these companies pop up over there. And so they have this kind of strange subsidized competition over there. And then there's a lot of companies that are doing well over there. But, but solar, en- solar energy just has so many problems maintaining itself when, it, when it's not propped up. Well, let's talk about Arizona. That's, that's what's going on in China here. What's going on in Arizona as far as the industry in general? I know the governor is going to, uh, I think, uh, announce some sort of job uh, announcements here in the next couple of days or so in the valley with another solar uh, uh, kind of uh, oriented company. How is the state of the solar industry in Arizona? It, it's, it's mixed. We, we have this great advantage that we're, we're all about sunshine here and we, we have first solar and, and, and the obvious fit with solar is here with us. We're close to California. We're, we're one of the top solar producing states in the country along with California and, and New Jersey. So, so on those things we're, we're, we're naturally a hub for that. Um, and, and there's a lot of projects that have come and gone and some have been successful and some haven't. You've seen school systems uh, go out there and put a lot of solar panels in the universities mm-hmm. have, have done that so there's a lot of that uh, and you've had the utilities kind of promote, promote things with consumers and small businesses it just long term it seems to have a problem just catching hold it doesn't employ a ton of people about 10,000 that's nothing to sneeze at those are good jobs but but it's not a huge a huge sector say like construction or, or, or tourism so uh, there's some there's some success stories but then there's a lot of, of challenges because these companies just can't seem to make it work competitively without without some kind of tax breaks and subsidies and being propped up. So what are you seeing in the future here? Are we seeing more success stories or are we going to see more sun techs? I, I think it's going to be like any other industry. You're going to see things get weeded down to a few major players, major companies that produce these things. Uh, I think if you continue to see kind of smart public policy, uh, smart tax breaks, smart subsidies for consumers and businesses, people will slowly try to try to adopt solar like you've seen in, in some cases. So I, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. The, the sun tech thing is a disappointment uh, f- for everybody involved uh, here in the region because that was a linchpin and it was a good promotion thing for folks. We have First Solar, we have SunTech. Those are big names in the industry that always helps you attract more more folks. So that's a disappointment. But long term, I, I don't think it's as gloomy as, as people think, but it's got to weed itself out and it's got to get, they've got to somehow find get the costs to, to work in a competitive marketplace versus more traditional forms of energy. Is there any indication of anyone assuming the plant operations out there? I haven't heard anything about that. They really didn't get a lot of tax breaks. You know, you look at these things where, where the, the Commerce Authority and GPAC and the city and the state are involved, you expect some kind of boondoggle uh, like Solorenda. Uh, it wasn't really like that. They were in line to get some job training um, help, just like any other company that would come here, but they didn't really meet the benchmarks to that. So, so I, I hope it doesn't discourage uh, you know uh, other other efforts to get solar here because it's a, it's an industry that can pay pay pretty well, and it's obviously an energy source for the future. And that that brings up my final question here: Is the concern that people will see the solar industry as some sort of panacea, as everyone will be working in solar in the next five to ten years, or are folks starting to take a more realistic viewpoint of solar as just one of many sectors in Arizona, and it's not a be-all and end-all? I, I think I think you're right. I think there was a, there was a point there when construction was down, and people said, "Well, what are we going to do with all these construction workers? Let's have them install solar panels and build these solar farms." Well, the solar farms, some of them got built, and once they're built, there's only a few guys there that you really need to run them. Uh, solar panels being installed, you see some work for that, 
but a lot of consumers can't afford that. When you're buying a hot water heater and you're you know, weighing your, your pennies, uh, you usually go with cost, and it's still cheaper in most cases, unless you have some kind of big subsidy from utility to build that. But, but on the other hand, you know, solar is still, still a, a promising sector for us just because of our climate, our proximity to California, and we still have a lot of companies here that do that, but it's, it, it depends on what path they take in terms of, of how to prop it up and, and how long that is. And it's an active industry, and again, with every sun tech that leaves, you never know who's going to be coming in here. We could get an announcement this week of someone else moving in. Well, the problem is, is SunTech sets a bad, for investors, yes. especially here, yes. they're used to investing in real estate and land, and you, you pitch a solar uh, company to, to investors, either whether here or Silicon Valley, things like SunTech kind of kind of uh, diminish their, their ability to invest in something like that. All right, Mike, good information. Good to have you here. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us. And Wednesday. On Arizona Horizon, we will bring you the latest news from the state capitol in our weekly update with the Arizona Capital Times. And we'll look at the two same-sex marriage cases that are before the U.S. Supreme Court this week. That's at 5.30 and 10 on the next Arizona Horizon. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.